Hey you guys, so it's time for another story time and today the story is called The Contract. Now, I've thought of this story once before. I've retold it twice out loud and twice in my head. <laughs> um, but I don't have the story completely thought out so I don't know how many parts this is going to be. I'm trying to make these story times under three parts because I don't want it dragging out, okay? So it's called The Contract. It is set in 1987. The location is Los Angeles. And our main character, our main, well, yeah, the main character, her name is Tiara. She is 23 years old. She's originally from Florida. She is, um, her parents are immigrants uh, from Haiti. Oh, yes, girl. So Tiara is the middle of three girls. Um, her oldest sister is currently in pharmaceutical school and her she's a senior actually she's just about done her younger sister is actually graduating from high school soon and she's on her way to college now tiara is the black sheep she did not go to um college she had no desire to go to college her dreams was to always be a movie star so that's one of the reasons why she moved to los angeles her parents were very upset especially her mother was very upset that they had came to this country they worked hard to put all their kids to sc through school just for Tierra to be like nope I'm not doing it so let's just jump right into the story y'all okay so here we go you know Tierra gets up kind of stretch stretches her arms and she looks into the mirror at herself Tierra was all of five foot seven she was um athletic build she prided herself in having a good shape she made sure that she worked out she did yoga three times a week and so she turned around and looked at herself to make sure that she was looking okay before she went into the other room to knock on Brienne's door to see why she was playing that music so loud so she knocked on the door she heard you know Brienne yell come on in walked in and there was Brienne laying on the couch wrestling through a magazine she's like what are you listening to tiara still wiping the sleep out of her eyes child and she yells at brianne she's like what are you listening listening to <laughs> brianne puts a um magazine she's like girl that's the new jody Watley." tiara's like jody Watley? you mean the girl that used to sing with shalimar <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh yeah, the girl just sing was shallow. And now she ventured out on her own, girl. She is singing by herself, and this song is hit a hit. So she sees Brienne like bopping her head, dancing into the mirror. Now Brienne, honey, Brienne don't put put on a couple of pounds since Tierra has known her. Um, and she met her at their job. They both work at a local um nightclub called the Ozone. Okay, so. Tierra rolls her eyes. She's like, all right, then, girl, I'm going to go ahead and take a shower and start to get ready for the day. And Brienne turns around. She's like, all right, then, T. She calls her T as a nickname. So, you know, uh, Tierra goes ahead and get ready for the day, takes her shower. She goes into the kitchen, you know, fix herself some yogurt. And she sits down. And that's when she sees Brienne comes in, gets a big box of cereal, starts pouring herself some cereal. And she looks at her and she's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't start work till later on all right like eight or nine o'clock but it's like midday so they're work they're waking up late because they get home late all right it's midday girl like one o'clock in the afternoon mm -hmm. so, so tiara scans the refrigerator in the cupboards and she's like hmm i may need to run to the grocery store brianne do you need anything <clears throat> that's when brianne puts her spoon down she's like oh you know what yes girl um you know go ahead and give me some of those cheetos and Tierra's looking at her and she's like, are you sure you want Cheetos? And she's like, what are you talking about, T? I'm fine. I, I guess that's what I need. So go ahead and give me the Hot Pockets. and <laughs> No, not Hot Pockets. Give me those Pop Tarts and give me the Cheetos, okay? And I'll go ahead and, you know, take the cash out my purse. So as she's heading out, the phone rings. So Tierra turns around and answers the phone. It's their manager from the club. What's her name? Her manager from the club, Sharon. And so Sharon, you know, is going on and on how the um, other other waitress, Melissa, won't be able to come in. She usually comes in a little bit early to help up and clean and all that, but she won't be able to come in. And she wants to know if Tierra and Brienne will come in. She will pay them overtime. And so she's listening. She's listening. She's like, okay, you know what? I'll be there, but I'll ask Brienne if she wants to tag along. And so Tierra hung up with her and went over to the table with Brienne. And she's like, well, who was that? She's like, well, that was Sharon. She's like, well, okay, what, what does she want? And so Tierra's like, well, she wants to know we will come in a little bit early because Melissa didn't show up. She's like, again? She's like, well, listen, Brienne. Yeah, she didn't show up again, but she wants to know if we would show up early and she will pay us double time. That's when Brienne looks at her. She's like, now, nah, T, 
You know better than that. That woman is not going to pay a double time. Not how the club has been struggling. And so, Tierra, unfortunately, can be a little bit, a little gullible. She, you know, even though she's lived in L.A. For, for a couple of years now, she can still be a little bit trustworthy of people. So, and she's like, come on, Brian, let's just go ahead and show up. Um, Sharon's good on her word. I'm pretty sure she'll pay her, pay us. Brian shakes her head. She's like, well, you can go up there, but I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and finish up this bowl of cereal. Hell, I may have another bowl. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> so... Tierra's like, whatever. So she goes ahead about her day. Um, she goes down to the garage. They live in a, um, an apartment complex with several, several floors, okay? So she goes down to the garage where her moped is parked. And she proceeds to go to the grocery store. As she's, you know, flying about on the roads of LA, she's just daydreaming and reminiscing of what her life will finally, finally look like once she becomes a big superstar, right, honey? So she goes back to the, she finally makes it back to the apartment, puts up the garage groceries and for the rest of the day until it's time for her to go in a little bit early and early for her would be six o'clock instead of eight she lounges around and she just looks at tv okay now finally it's time for her to go in she goes to work and she starts cleaning up and doing what she's supposed to do since melissa's not there yet and she goes into the back into sharon's um office and she knocks on the door and sharon has her head down and tiara knocks on the door a little bit louder this when sharon looks up she's like oh come on in t so Tierra goes into the office and she sits down. She's like, well, what's going on with Melissa? And Sharon is looking at her over her eyes. She's like, well, do you really want to know the truth or? And so that's when Tierra was like, I don't know what's going on. Tell me what's going on. And so um, Miss Sharon was basically like, she's like, well, T, apparently her um, boyfriend has AIDS. And so she's been really caring for him. And Tierra was like, oh my God, are you serious? So y'all back then, of those you don't know, back then AIDS was basically a death sentence for a lot of people. And unfortunately, we didn't have the medication or the drugs that we have now. You can now live for a, a relatively normal life as long as you don't get really sick. So anyway, T is like, oh my God, no, I didn't know that. And Sharon's looking at her like, she said, well, yeah, that's the word on the street that she's been carrying, you know, basically nursing her boyfriend. Um, and I'm pretty sure she's probably going to quit here in a couple of more weeks. She said, well, this is here. Well, anything that I can do to help Sharon, you know, I could really use his money. Don't tell Brienne. Matter of fact, don't please don't tell anyone. But I'm hoping to move out here in a couple more weeks. I just need 500 more dollars. And Sharon, Sharon is now back to writing whatever she was working on when Tierra came in. She just put her head down. She's like, okay, yeah, I'll, you know, we could talk later on. And so Tierra is all excited because she's thinking, great, this is all the money I need to finally move out on her own. So. She goes back in, into the um, nightclub, starts getting the chairs together and, you know, wiping off the tables and all that. And 8 o'clock rolls around. Now, the club really doesn't start bumping until 10 o'clock. Let's just be honest, okay? So, it starts to get a little bit more people coming in. Brienne finally comes in, girl, rolls in an hour late. <laughs> <laughs> chubby as ever um and everything's muppet so tiara goes on about the night you know you know getting her tips a little bit here a little bit there and that's when kim one of the waitress waitresses for the vip section says hey t um i just heard that a big shot movie producer is up there in the vip section why don't you go up there and take their order and tiara was like are you serious she's like yeah go ahead girl this is you know you've been working all this time taking night classes acting classes at night why don't you go up there and introduce yourself so tiara excuse me tiara was a little nervous then but she's like okay um okay okay i'll do it she looks around i don't know what she was looking at child she looks around scanning the you know the audience and she goes up the stairs now this vip section is up a flight of stairs so she you know gets the order gets their drinks from brianne brianne is so is the bartender right she goes up the stairs child the second step from the top she falls <laughs> She falls, the drinks spill, the drinks actually spilled on who appears to be one of the, the movie producers. It spills on his shoes and Tierra gets a fumbling, a fumbling around. She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. But the movie producer is really nice about it. He's like, are you okay? Are you hurt? She's like, no, 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 I'm fine. I'm just so sorry, you guys. Let me just go ahead and clean up. I'll have someone to come up here, clean up this mess. I'll get your drinks ASAP. I'll be right back. She's fumbling around for Trey. She goes downstairs. And for a minute there, she stops for a minute and she runs into to the bathroom to check, you know, how she looks. And she spilled drink all over the bottom of her dress. So she tries to wipe it off as much as possible, throws the paper towels away, run up to the bar, ten, bar um, the bar, excuse me. She throws the paper towels away, runs up to the bar, 
Brienne was like, girl, are you okay? She's like, yes, I'm, she's like, oh my God, did you see this? She's like, yeah, girl, everybody saw you. So here you go, I already made the drinks. There you go. So <laughs> Brienne had saw her um, fall up the stairs, unfortunately, but she'd already had the drinks prepared for her. She was there for her girl. So Tierra was like, oh, thank you so much, Brienne. You're a lifesaver. She grabs the drinks, goes upstairs, and she gives them their drinks. And so she's standing around, fumbling around. This is her fumbling around with the tray, right? She's fumbling around with the tray because she's nervous all of a sudden, right? So finally she says, okay, um, my name is Tiara. If there's anything else you need, please let me know. Is there anything else that, do you guys need anything? One of the girls sitting to the side was laughing. It was basically, basically like, no, we don't need, need anything, but it looks like you need another dress. So Tiara laughed nervously and she walked downstairs and just continued her night. And so Kim came up to her. She's like, okay, so well, how did it go? She's like, girl, I fell up the stairs. I was so embarrassed when I brought them back their drinks again. I didn't know what to say, so I chickened out. And so Kim was like, it's okay, girl. That guy is up here every other month. I'm pretty sure you can talk to him then. You know, Tierra kind of shrugged it off and went on about her way. So, so as it's closing down, it's about 2 o'clock. And so Tierra goes back into the office where Sharon knocks on the door. Sorry, y'all. Knocks on the door. She's like, um, hey, Miss Sharon, can I speak to you for a second? Sharon looks up her, comes in. She's like, okay, so about that um, payment, you know, is it possible for me to get it on this week's check? So that's when Sharon looked at her. She takes off her glasses. She's like, look, T, I know I would say, I know I said I would pay you um, over time, but we've been really struggling lately with the club and I have all these debts I need to pay. And that's when Tierra leans back in her chair. She's like, Sharon, are you serious? You told me you would pay me over time. She's like, look, sweetheart, look. There's dozens, of, there's dozens of girls that would take your job right now. So I told you I would pay you when I can, but right now I just can't. And she looks down at her paperwork and that's when Tierra is just looking at her like, and she slowly just gets up. She walks back into the uh, main area of the club and Brienne just looking at her like, she's like, so what did she say? Tierra, so you already know what she said. She's like, look, T, I tried to tell you Sharon ain't gonna pay you that. She is up to here in depth. Trust me, I know. She's not gonna pay you anything. I'm so sorry you had to do all that work, but <laughs> they go home, right? So a couple of weeks pass by, you know, Brienne gets up and she's up eating her bowl of cereal again. And Tierra's like, hey, Brienne, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the grocery store if there's anything else you need. And so Brienne's looking at her like, well, since apparently I don't need to be eating no chips and uh, some pop tarts. She's like, bring it, you can eat whatever you want. I'm just saying, you know, is there anything else you, you she's like, no, I'm good. <laughs> so Tierra went down to her scooter, her moped or whatever, and went to the grocery store, right? So as she's in the grocery store, she's in the fruit section, she, you know, she's getting her veggies and her fruit together and her salads, you know, she's healthy, hell. Look who she sees in the um, produce aisle. It's that famous movie producer. And so she's like, well, God, girl, is he a producer or a director? He's a director, y'all. I'm sorry, the movie director. So she mustered up the nerve to go and she taps him on the shoulder. He turns around. He's handsome, honey. He's about 6'3", broad shoulders. He has a nice beard. Oh, yes, girl, he has a nice beard. Tiara gets him to be about 30s, you know, early early to mid-30s, right? So he turns around. He When he sees her, he smiles. And so she's like, um... I don't know if you remember me or not, but I served you some drinks at Octane that night. He's like, oh, yeah, um, Tiffany, he's, she said Tiara. He's like, oh, Tiara, yeah. She's like, yeah, so I'm pretty sure you get people coming up to you all the time, but I'm an aspiring actress, and I was wanting, wanting to know if you have any upcoming movie roles that I could audition for. And he kind of looked at her. Yeah, he looked at her up and down. He's like, well, I'll tell you what. He reaches into his wallet wallet, and gets out his business card. He said, well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you call first thing in the morning this number and speak to my receptionist, Rose. She'll go ahead and schedule you for an upcoming audition. And, you know, Tiara is ecstatic. She's like, are you serious? He's like, yeah, just go ahead. Make sure you call first thing in the morning, though. She's like, I will, I will. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. She looks down at the business card, and it says Paul Winthrop. Winthrop. You know, she's doing this with the business card, y'all. This is my earring. She's like, Winthrop. That name sounds familiar, Paul Winthrop, but she doesn't know what she remembers it from, right? So, she tucks it in her fanny pack. <laughs> this is the 80s, 
girl, you gotta have a fanny pack. So she tucks in her fanny pack, right, and gets on her scooter. Child, and she's zooming through the scooter. She's thinking about what she's gonna wear to this audition, what she's gonna say. Oh my God, you know, how she's gonna wear her makeup, everything. So finally makes it to, to the appoint, to the apartment, excuse me, puts away the groceries. She, she shares the news with Brienne. Brienne is, is um, truthfully excited for her. She's like, well, that's good, T. I really do hope you do good on your audition about time, right? She goes to bed early. First thing in the morning, she calls the receptionist, Rose. Rose, who was a little bit rude, but whatever. She calls, schedule, schedule an audition for that Thursday. This was Monday, okay, for that Thursday. So Brienne's, Brienne's like, oh my God, that's pretty soon. So she's like, okay, whatever. So she looks through her closet for something really cute to wear. She finds this neon green, this neon green um, uh, mini dress and she has white hoop earrings to work with her, right? Thursday is the morning of the audition. She gets there bright and early. The receptionist hands her a package of paper along with a clipboard. She says, read this over and sign the paperwork, okay? At the end, there's a page, you sign it, date it. So Brienne's skipping through it. She's looking at, it's 15 to 20 pages. She's looking down at her, at her watch. Five minutes. There's no way she's gonna have time to read all of, all of this and sign it before the before the audition. And so that's when she goes up to Rose and says, "What is this exactly?" She's like, "Just sign it. You know, if you really don't have to read it, just go ahead and sign it. We always have people just sign it anyway. It's just a bunch of contract stuff. Go ahead and sign it." Then Tiara sits down and waits for her audition. Right on time, she's being called in into a small room. There's three people sitting at the, sitting at a desk, including Paul. A skinny, um, rather skinny man that's in the middle, and a plus size black woman, which who's wearing a blonde wig. So, Paul then says, It's nice to see you, Tiara. And Tiara just shook her head, she was so nervous. So, she asked him, She's like, Should I sit down? Should I stand up? And so, that's when Paul said, Go ahead and sit in, in the chair. There was this chair sitting right in the front of them, so she sits down. That's when the tall, skinny man opened up a file folder and he starts handing pieces of paper to Paul and the woman next to him. And so, the um, the guy in the middle then speaks and speaks directly to her and says, um, we just have a couple of questions we want to ask you before we get started with the audition. She's like, okay, that's fine. So the first question he asked her was, how many sexual partners have you had? And Tiara was like, excuse me? She wasn't sure if she had heard him correctly. She said, excuse me, how many? He's like, yes, how many sexual partners have you had? And she's like, I don't understand what they have to do with this audition. And so that's when Paul, the guy came, the guy linked over to Paul and whispered to his ear. And that's when Paul said, look, Tiara, um, we're going to be asking a certain number of questions. We'll go ahead and skip to the next question. But eventually, eventually we're going to go back to this question and you need to answer it. And so Tiara kind of shifted in her seat uncomfortably. So she's like, okay. So next the woman asked her a question and she looks at her. She's like, um, have you had any thoughts? to ever harm someone. And Tiara was like, what do you mean harm someone? And so the woman looked at her, she's like, well, have you had any thoughts, ever had any thoughts of wanting to harm or kill someone? That's when Tiara was looking around, she's like, she's confused, she's like, what type of audition is this? That's it for part one, y'all.